Soul family from the uh, mountains of Japan. I'm up here just outside of Fujiyoshida near Mount Fuji. Actually, maybe I can jump down here and give you a view of Mount Fuji. Sorry, I'm kind of like crushing through the woods. Check this out. Yeah, that's Mount Fuji. <laughs> I'm on my phone right now, but I wanted to explain to you guys quickly the the essence of connection, right? How everything is connected. Not the idea, not the, the potential, but the science of how everything is connected. This uh, <clears throat> is just a kind of little explanation on how Advaita works, the, the non-dual philosophy of Vedanta. Don't mind my black eye and scar still healing from... Uh, India but uh, essentially let's talk about how everything is connected so imagine me right I am in the physical sense composed of elements many many elements carbon elements I inhale oxygen elements I inhale nitrogen elements I am comprised of these elements so is this tree, it's comprised of elements. Many different elements, some very different, some similar. Uh, along with other species, even our DNA and the way things make themselves up can be nearly identical. But let's go deeper, right? Not just that I'm described, and uh, not just that I'm uh, made of elements, or that I am comprised of elements, but that I am beyond the elements, comprised of atoms. These little, minute, invisible, nearly molecules, these little things called atoms that are consistently vibrating and moving. And the amounts of protons, neutrons, and electrons in these atoms create different elements. But regardless, these atoms are made up of these protons, neutrons, and electrons. This tree, just the same, is made up of atoms, is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, the numbers might be different, but that doesn't change that they're made up of atoms. The same way that in people and in plants, uh, our colors, our textures, our sizes, our shapes, our weight might all be different, doesn't change the fact that we're made up of elements, of which are made up of, again, these atoms. And within these atoms, they're at, or at an even deeper level, quarks, neutrinos, boson particles, infinitely, almost fractally deepening throughout every layer of this tree's atomic structure, and by definition, my atomic structure. So if we get closer and closer and closer, imagine we just kept zooming in, you wouldn't see a tree and a, a human. You wouldn't see a tree and a squirrel, or a tree and a, a fox and a bear and a anything like that, you would see elements. And then if you kept going closer, you would see atoms and electrons and neutrons. And if you kept going closer, you would see nothing but these quarks and neutrinos and boson particles that all are identical at their core, that are just that, these particulate things, this particulate matter at the deepest level. Even the oxygen around us is made up of all those different things, although it might seem invisible and non-existent to the eye. But at the deepest level, on the physical level, it's identical. It's the same. The same compounds. The same atoms, neutrons, protons, electrons, uh, boson particles, quarks, all these different things. It would just be that, an endless, endless sea of that composition. So much like how when we're, say, playing with Legos, right? The Legos can be different shapes and sizes. The Legos can be different colors. We still understand that they're all Legos. We don't think those Legos are different. So it goes for existence itself. Everything might appear separate. It might appear different. It might appear disjointed and disconnected. But the closer we get, the deeper we go, we see that it's all one. It's all this same field of whatever physicality you might call it of existence, you might call it. And beyond even that physical matter, we have this consciousness beyond all of this. 
Now that's a video for another time, but in the physical sense, just think of it. When you think of yourself as one with everything in the physical sense, it helps to understand that at the deepest level, if you zoom all the way in, there is no separation. There are just these infinitely expansive molecules identical across all spheres and spectrums, showing themselves in different orders randomly, but that they're all still there, always interconnected, always one. It's not me and then the air and then the tree. It's atoms, 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 right? It's protons, electrons, neutrons, protons, electrons, neutrons. It's quarks, boson, particles, neutrinos, quarks, boson, particles, neutrinos. That's it, infinitely, all the way through, through everything, always, and it always has been. So on a physical sense, if you want to understand oneness, the concept of Vedanta and Advaita, the non-dual nature of being, that's an easy way to see it on the physical side. Uh, and something that I always like to think of when I'm out here in nature and I'm thinking of, oh, me and nature. No, no, no. Nature. Itness. Allness. The I, as Ramana Maharshi would call it. I-ness. The absolute. Always. Appearing to the finite mind, to the conscious mind, as separate, as different. As a tree. As a human with a mind and an ego. As leaves on the ground. As steps and stairs as even this really, really giant mountain known as Mount Fiji, or Fuji, my bad, <laughs> Mount Fuji, uh, here in Japan. But that it is all actually one, the absolute itself, known as Brahman or everything. It always has been, it always will be, whether or not we subjectively see it as separate due to how our mind functions, or not. So that's a little uh, simple video on the physicality of oneness. If that video interests you and you want to see another one on consciousness potentially, uh, like, subscribe, and leave your comments below, and I'll make that as well. And as always, much love from Japan. Ram Ram.